All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday uh, afternoon, Tuesday afternoon here in Texas, 11.03 a.m. California time, April 29, 2025 is the date. Hope everyone's having a good week. Quite a busy day out there south of New Zealand in the last, well, in the last couple hours here, we've had two 6.0 earthquakes the largest one a 6.8 and that's the most recent one look at this bouncing back and forth activity that's being observed here uh, from the 6.2 this morning right about 8 16 california time a decent sized earthquake 6.2 a little bit closer to new zealand almost immediately following that 6.2 so movement up north along the kermadec trench that was followed up by a secondary earthquake just a few minutes later into the same area now you know within about an hour and 20 minute time period here following the last five pointer up north we got a 6.8 earthquake striking down here just off the plate boundary uh, this is every uh, every possible um, hints or clues so to speak here when we're looking at plate tectonics to watch this area along the plate boundary i'm talking about the alpine fault or potentially the hikarangi subduction zone which sits uh, just off the eastern coast here of north island alpine fault down there across the um, western side of south island now that region there historically can get some big big earthquakes and uh, well Let's go ahead and check out this little statement here uh, that I have up on the screen. Historically, right, when this fault ruptures, it produces an earthquake of about a magnitude 8.0. So in the last 12 million years, uh, that area around the mountains or the Southern Alps have been uplifted by an amazing 20 kilometers. Quite a bit of uh, uplift going on there across that area of the Alpine Fault and um, it, potentially we could be overdue here. I think we are overdue across the Alpine Fault. Got a lot of movement north, a lot of movement south. I'm telling you guys, watch this area around the uh, New Zealand area. It's, it's right there in between this bouncing back and forth activity. And normally, if we see that somewhere across the, uh, the planet at a, uh, another plate section or another segment of a, a different plate, that normally means to watch this uh, middle point out here. That includes... Pretty much all of New Zealand right there. Um, GeoNet servers, they are reporting that uh, six-pointer this morning as a 5.9 earthquake. So 6.2, GeoNet servers reporting a 5.9. Interesting there. Uh, that larger earthquake not showing up. Of course, that would be, um, uh, you know, obviously a ways away. I don't think that would be uh, showing up here across uh, the graphs here that they have. It's a way south, but I'm telling you, watch the bouncing back and forth. It's pretty crazy. Let's go ahead and check out um, historical data out there across New Zealand uh, where the Alpine Fault obviously is um, absent of earthquake activity there. Uh, but historically, you know, when, when geologists go out and study the past historical um, ruptures there along that Alpine Fault, um, they've come up with a magnitude of an 8.0, and obviously it's been quite a long time since a large earthquake has struck out there across the Alpine Fault. That's a, that This area of the Alpine Fault and the Hikarangi Subduction Zone is uh, New Zealand's prime fault systems there, and uh, areas that are well overdue for some big earthquake activity and can produce in excess of 8.0 earthquakes there around the Alpine Fault. The Hikarangi subduction zone could be up in the upper eights, maybe even the lower nine magnitude range here. And uh, that's well overdue as well. So look at that. Nothing along the Alpine Fault here. Uh, historically, in terms of 6.0 and above, a little bit down south. Earlier this year, uh, let me bring this up here real quick. Uh, earlier, here's today's six pointer, uh, 6.7 a little bit closer to the uh, South Island tip here, just off the plate boundary. Um, far as any specific movement directly at the southern end here of that plate boundary, the Alpine Fault, there's been a number of earthquakes, a 7.8 just off of it in 2009, and a couple other earthquakes along this area, 2003. Um, but, you know, we're wide open right here. 
and it's been building up and building up. And as you can see on that little informational statement I showed you guys, it's uh, building up the, uh, the mountain ranges out here on the uh, east side of the mountains. Beautiful uh, country of uh, New Zealand. So continue to keep an eye on that, folks. Let me see what we got here for any smaller earthquake activity in this region. Zoom in here just a little bit. Uh, looks like some movement down south here near the Milford Sound region. 3.4, that's from April. Oh, well, that's April 30th. Yeah, I forgot you guys are in the future down there in New Zealand. Uh, so some further movement, it looks like, working its way up north here. Um, further, you know, as I mentioned, away from the six-pointers today and, and closer to the Alpine fault up here across the South Island region. That's not good news. Got to watch that pretty closely, folks, here. And I've been chatting about how New Zealand's, you know, pretty much overdue here for some larger activity. And I've been saying to keep an eye on this area. A couple comments here today before all this activity stirred up. Earthmaster is a fear monger. <laughs> I read all the comments. I do. Uh, I'm not a fear monger. What I like to do is look at historical data put into what's going on around it, right? These little hints and clues bouncing back and forth of the activity today. Uh, this is a prime spot here for some larger activity. And we're starting to fill in here, right? 6.8 is a large earthquake. That's not fear mongering. A 6.2 is a large earthquake. That's not fear mongering. Thankfully, uh, these two earthquakes away from populated areas, but that's not going to be the case here during the Alpine Fault or the Hikurangi subduction zone. And New Zealand is sitting on a prime area of the plate boundary that uh, can see some earthquake activity real soon in terms of larger movement. And that's not fear mongering. That is just the facts. You know, I, I, I see it. I hear it a lot there in the comments. I don't respond. I just ignore it. Uh, let's go ahead and check out what's going on here across California real quick. Southern California, a couple smaller earthquakes out here just off the coast of San Diego. Um, 2.5, that's a decent earthquake there on the San Diego trough fault zone there. It's a ways away from San Diego there, but in the Pacific. Quite a few fault systems here leading up to the plate boundary, which is the San Andreas Fault, which is uh, looks like it's currently sleeping right now. I'm not seeing a whole lot of activity stirring up there. Uh, on that far as larger movement goes. In fact, most of that smaller microquake activity. A couple smaller microquakes up and down the board there. Nothing big. Carlock Fault Shear Zone still showing some activity from yesterday. Uh, looks like nothing new to report today, but remember, moving around one portion of the plate here, the Pacific Plate, uh, can have a diverse effect here, negative, upstream here across New Zealand and across any other sections of the um, plates that may be connected to the Pacific Plate. Just like a giant jigsaw puzzle here. Move around one piece and ultimately things can take place thousands of miles away. So we keep an eye here, um, you know, mainly New Zealand right now, but uh, Southern California has been quite active with a lot of activity here recently. We discussed that in the past few videos. Uh, there across the Pinnacles area, that's on the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. Got a little swarm of activity there this morning, including a 3.0. 2.5 and a couple other smaller quakes in there as well. So this is some newer uptick here this morning, uh, today. So continue to watch that region, the San Andreas Fault. San Francisco, pretty quiet. They've been uh, dodging any earthquakes up there, uh, including any, any smaller ones. It's been pretty quiet up there across uh, the Bay Area of San Francisco. Uh, let's look at um, Yellowstone. Not a whole lot going on there across Yellowstone for now. But uh, I just want to double check this, see what's going on if there's anything of noteworthy value a couple smaller earthquakes here i do see it on purple mountain mary lake as well it's a couple of these very small earthquakes and that's that's i believe the usgs is showing some of that on the map here let me um go over here and check this out some of these smaller quakes right here up into uh yellowstone national park very small quakes below the 2.0 threshold. So not a whole lot going on up there, folks. Uh, in uh, Yellowstone, out in the uh, Permian Basin, Texas, some oil-filled uh, earthquakes out there. Really nothing big. New Madrid Seismic Zone outside of that area. We've got 2.4 in Clinton, Arkansas from yesterday. 
As uh, far as any areas up northeast, one more earthquake in Buffalo, Ohio for 2.8. Been getting a number of earthquakes up there recently, I would say, and that uh, specifically in that region. That's the third one here in the last 30 days. So um, quite uh, rare, but uh, maybe there's some older fault systems out here that uh, could be activating. All right, far as the rest of the uh, activity goes around the planet, most of the hot spots down there across New Zealand, south and working its way up north, middle point, keep an eye there on that boundary, New Zealand entirety right there needs to be on guard. A quick glance here at space weather activity from solarham.net or .com, I think it is now. Let's go ahead and check this. I'm just making sure everything's uh, working here on this uh OBS software system. Well, it looks like we're uh, cranking up some C flare activity and maybe even a little bit of M flare movement. Look at that. One, two, three M flares in the last 24 hours there. Let's see what's going on. Looks like it's from that active area I've been chatting about here. I think I mentioned it yesterday uh, during the morning update. Uh, newer region 4079 looks like it's just barely visible there on the earth facing side of the sun producing numerous M flares uh, that uh, is rotating slowly and surely into the earth directed view that's going to be this region up here on the far eastern limb quick glance here at the magnetogram image shows a massive sunspot area back here uh, a lot more active than any of these other ones we've observed here in the last week or so so uh, that's an area to watch, pending it holds together and uh, continues to remain complex magnetically. Uh, we'll see uh, some further threats there of some C and M flare activity. I don't think we'll see any X flare, but uh, you never know. Right now, the X flare threat around 5% chance. M flare at 25, that's probably should be bumped up to about 50 or so. Uh, no major roars in the forecast there for now, folks. Uh, about that severe weather event yesterday, right? Remember, a lot of folks talking about it. I even covered it. I was actually down here south into the uh, southern zone of uh, Texas and Oklahoma covering the severe weather. Um, activity up north in Iowa. Uh, check this out here real quick. Only two tornado reports up there. They were expecting a massive tornado outbreak. Every storm chaser on the planet was heading up there yesterday. We're talking about Reed Timmer, the big, you know, big time storm chasers up there. I decided not to just, I decided not to go up there uh, and work my way down south. Now I didn't catch any tornadoes yesterday, but seen a lot of uh, storm development down here across Northern Texas into Oklahoma, where that's continuing uh, in this hour. A lot of lightning last night. Uh, me and Missy Mimi's was just out driving around all night last night, looking at the awesome lightning and fireflies out there. Pretty cool. Um, but yeah, this was uh, what we call, in as far as tornado activity goes, a bust. And that is good news because this was not a tornado outbreak out here, which it could have been had the ingredients worked out right. There was some large hail reports uh, coming in, 117 of them in total tally. Uh, some wind reports as well. But for tornado activity, only two. That is good. That uh, outbreak did not happen as a lot of folks were expecting. Big time forecasters were, you know, expecting a, a huge event. That did not play out. Um, today's outlook, I'm actually down here in the enhanced zone of Texas for a uh, probably mainly a hail threat today. Uh, we've got some big time hail. Look at that 30% chance hatched area of seeing my window get uh, shattered. I'm hope hopefully not. I try to stay out of it, but you never know. I talk about some big time hail. Um, let's see what these guys are chatting about here. I don't know if they're going to give any type of hail me measurement. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, I'm expecting to probably be over two inches with this type of setup right here today. So we'll see how that plays out. Tornado threat uh, is somewhat limited. Only a 5 and 2% chance here around that area that you can see on the map. Mostly wind. Uh, big time wind threats as well. That's a hatched area of seeing um, 65 knots or greater in within 25 miles of the point. Uh, for the hill and the hatched area, I got about 10% or greater 
uh, probability of seeing two inch diameter hail or larger within 25 miles of a point. So this will fire up late afternoon and overnight as well. But uh, I'm just going to try and cover that if it does happen to cover over my region. In the meantime, folks, uh, you know, keeping an eye here on New Zealand. <coughs> it, oh, what do we got here? Another, we got a 5.1 coming in. Uh, Dominican Republic area, as we speak, within the last few minutes. <coughs> I don't know what it is, but it just got a coughing fit all of a sudden. It never fails. Turn on the microphone here, and I pick up a cough. And I don't have a cough drop. And I don't know if I have anything to drink. You got something to drink? What do you got? Ooh, Gatorade. Missy Mimi. Thank you. <laughs> I just didn't know it was hiding in your duffel bag. And I may have caught a tornado. Yeah, and Missy Mimi's may have caught a tornado late last night outside of Lawton, Oklahoma. When we were out looking at the uh, lightning, uh, she did post some of those on her page, I believe, right? Um, I will. I believe I posted a video. Video, okay, some video on her page. Oh. So go check it out, Missy Mimi's. Uh, anyway, five point one right now, Dominican Republic. We've uh, definitely been seeing a swarm of activity north of this area recently. Look at the last thirty days, a big time swarm up here around the Puerto Rico Trench. And in general, quite active, 150 earthquakes. But uh, things are getting tense out here. The swarm is occurring here on the, around the Puerto Rico mainland area. Mariota's trough right here, pushing up this area, creating some earthquake swarming. Obviously, putting strain out here against the Puerto Rico Trench. That's got potential there of seeing a mega quake if things uh, were to rupture there. And uh, just things are getting active here. After a couple days of quietness and earthquake uh earthquake department i'm going to be uh, watching this here throughout the day folks um i will provide uh, some further updates should things um escalate but you know it's, it's hard to ignore this these events this morning at 6.2 just a short time later 5.4 and then a 5.1 a little bit uh about an hour later that 6.8 strike so this whole area uh, is about ready to move here, I think. And that's unfortunately means New Zealand. So be on guard. Um, we'll see you guys back out here just a little bit later on this evening. Didn't get a chance to do an update la late last night because we were stuck out in the Wichita Mountains and dodging buffalo. <laughs> I, you know, it's the first time being out there around the Wichita Mountains here in Oklahoma. Had no clue that there'd be uh, uh, it's like a, is it a sanctuary or a... Wildlife it's Refuge? The Wichita Mountain Wildlife National Refuge. National Refuge, yeah. There's buffalo all over the place. I was like, whoa, what is that huge thing? It's like literally standing right in front of us as we pulled off the road there to get some lighting pictures. And I was like, nope, we got to get back inside. And uh, just kind of took off from there. Beautiful creatures, but they are huge. Like a giant, you know, like a car. Pretty crazy. All right. Anyway, folks, I'm out of here. Uh, yeah, we'll see you guys back out here later on this evening. Take care.